During World War II, German forces used what they thought was an unbreakable code to encrypt all of their military communications, but eventually the Allies broke this code using their knowledge of science. Now a new movie depicts a mathematician at the heart of this effort. But how did he do it? Ten years before the start of World War II, Germany was using what's called the Enigma machine. It's a physical device that could encrypt and decrypt messages to a degree never before seen in cryptography. Polish codebreakers had had some success with earlier versions of this machine, but once Germany made some upgrades, those Polish efforts failed. To really beat Enigma, it required the man who almost invented computer science by himself. Showcased in a new biopic starring Benedict Cumberbatch, The Imitation Game tells the story of Alan Turing, a mathematical prodigy and professor who lent his services to the Allied codebreaking effort the day after the war started. He joined nearly 10,000 people working on breaking German code. To understand why you need genius level intellect to break the Enigma machine, you have to know why it is so hard to break in the first place. Join me, won't you? So the Enigma machine would select three rotors. Now the Enigma machine that Alan Turing was working on had a selection out of possibly five, and you would choose three, making it even harder to decrypt. So when you're choosing rotors, you have a choice of five, then four, then three. That's a possible combinations of rotors. Then you have the possible combinations of starting settings for each rotor, one for each letter, which is 26 times 26 times 26. And then you have what's called a plug board at the front of the Enigma machine, which basically basically just links pairs of letters together to switch them. Now, according to this equation, that is a gigantic number. You add all of these possible combinations up, and you get 158 quintillion, 962 quadrillion, 555 trillion, 217 billion, 826 million, 360 thousand different possible combinations for just one Enigma machine. To encrypt and decrypt using Enigma, you'd have to choose the right combination out of this quintillion possible combinations. This is why Enigma was considered impossible to break. Oh yeah, and the code changed every day. Enter Alan Turing. He found Enigma's flaw. The flaw in Enigma was that no letter could be enciphered as itself, so if you pressed A on the machine, it would never come back as A. That's a clue as to how Enigma worked. During the middle of the war, Turing and his codebreakers knew how the rotors were wired up, but not the starting positions of those rotors and therefore how to actually use an Enigma machine. So they created their own machine called the bomb that would sort through all these possible combinations and break the code. The first thing that you'd have to do is guess some phrase that might be in the encrypted messages that the Allies got from the Germans by spying on them. So you'd get this encrypted text, which is basically gibberish, but let's guess that maybe Wetterbericht or weather report in German lines up right here. It's a good guess. Now, we know that A is going to be enciphered as W, T as Q, T as B, and so on. So knowing how the rotor positions are already wired up, we're going to have to guess the plug board and therefore the wired up rotor positions. Now, let's assume that we have T. I have a very basic Enigma machine here. You put in a T, it goes through the plug board, gets swapped. Let's say it gets swapped and changed to an A. It goes through the rotor and becomes K. We know how the rotors are wired up. And then we can say that K is in the plug board with E. And also that T is in the plug board with A. Now let's take the another example. T is also connected to G in our example. So it goes through, T is linked to A, it goes through the rotor position. We know that it could become a T, and then T is also connected to G through the plug board. But now we see that T is connected to A and also to G, so we have a contradiction here. One down, a quintillion to go. Alan Turing's insight was that once you have a contradiction, you can also dismiss 
all other calculations that come out of logic like this. So the bomb could rapidly and almost instantaneously, using electricity, eliminate all contradictions in the text that you assumed, so only the right rotor setting would be left. If there's a contradiction, the rotor setting must be wrong, Turing assumed. So you sort through by process of elimination to get at the right setting. And with other colleagues, this bomb machine was able to break the German code, which changed every day and had so many combinations in as little as 20 minutes. You should know who Alan Turing is because he's an amazing example of how science can end conflict. Historians estimate that the efforts of Turing and his colleagues may have shortened the war by up to two years and therefore saved millions and millions of lives. Unfortunately, later in life, Turing was prosecuted for his sexual orientation and committed suicide soon afterwards. Who knows how much good the father of modern computer science could have done if he had more time to work. But what he did do is prove that brains can always beat bullets. Why? Because science. Want more science? Check out my last video on a real-life Mockingjay. Make sure to click to subscribe, and if you have any comments or questions, hit me up in the comment section below. Thanks!